the Munich Olympics were a, uh, a very unique experience in a kind of a very negative way. Uh, it was a time for most folks who were there that this was a culmination of many years of hard work. Um, the Olympic Games tend to be a very joyous time and because of the activities that took place I think it had a, a change on the way the Olympics are viewed probably forever since those games. Uh, the amount of money that's been on security um, has essentially bankrupt some of the cities that have had to, that have hosted Olympic Games. So I guess for me, my experiences in Germany uh, in that, that summer were one of um, the shattering of uh, certain ideals. Well, I think it is. I think all life experiences, traumatic, positive, there are, uh, there are opportunities to change the way we think and feel and behave. I think what matters is how we interpret those experiences, whether it's a severely traumatic event or a very positive, robust, you know, emotion filled with joy event. Um, and I think what one chooses to do is how we are going to respond to those events, how we're going to allow it to shape the way we are. Uh, and hopefully that's somewhat of a conscious choice and with the support of those who are meaningful in our lives, I think that helps us to then decide what we're going to take away from those experiences and how we're going to then allow them to shape the rest of our life. Well, exercise is really a very fascinating biological intervention. Uh, there is very robust data now demonstrating that a regular, enjoyable, exercise program can have some very positive biological effects on the brain and particularly the aging brain. So for years we've known that exercise is generally a good thing, but exercise is a very broad term. So what type of exercise, how much exercise, you know, too much of a good thing is not such a good thing and we know that there are people who over exercise to the point where they break their bodies down. What I love to see is our appreciation of not only the psychosocial positive effects of regular enjoyable exercise, but now the biological effects. So you see elderly individuals, uh, if you go to China and you see them doing their Tai Chi along uh, you know, the riverside where they're just this rhythmic dance where they're stretching their muscles and it's kind of a spiritual thing, but it's truly really a part of exercise. So I think engaging in exercise does many, many things, certainly biological, but beyond that. And one of the things as we grow old is it allows us to feel like we are still human beings, that we can move and have purpose. I think the body is always meant to move. And if it's moved in an enjoyable way, I think now we're being able to demonstrate the positive effects on health, physical health, as well as mental health. I think the first thing that we should do when we're prescribing any exercise is we sit down and ask the person, do they enjoy exercise? And if they say no, then I say, okay, is there any time that you're moving your body that it feels good? And people, sometimes teams will say, well, when I go dancing or I go to a concert, I said, well, that's fine. Let's not call it exercise, let's just call it fun movement. So when I deal with adolescents, I don't want it to go in like I'm telling them what to do. Uh, adolescence can be a time of kind of rebelling against authority figures. So I want to go and listen to them on what they enjoy doing. And then, without being too preachy, tell them why it's really important to do the things that are fun. And hopefully moving, whether it's dancing, swimming, walking, it doesn't have to be in lifting weights. Uh, you know, oftentimes adolescent boys want to get that cut look, they want to have the big muscles, so they're more than willing to go in and work out in the gym. Girls, not necessarily. Um, they might have other goals. So I think the key to establishing a successful exercise program in adolescence, in my opinion and in my clinical experience, has been to not sit down and talk to them or lecture to them, but to ask questions and listen and then come up with a, an, a program of movement that's fun and enjoyable and something that they're going to want to do as opposed to something that they're being told they should do. I think, uh, yeah, I have heard of the camps, I'm learning more about them, uh, but I think what the camps have the opportunity to do is to, for at least some period of time, control for some of the factors that might be impeding 
in an individual's capacity to learn about uh, a more healthy, enjoyable lifestyle, which would include exercise and maybe some alterations in diet. The problem that we have oftentimes is there are a lot of conflicting forces. You know, they're going out with their friends and they're all going to the fast food joints. Or they're, you know, they're experimenting with uh, you know, having a lot of beer on the weekends, which is a lot of dead calories. So I think what the camps allow the individual to experience is to, to learn in a positive, hopefully fun way about ways to create a healthier lifestyle. To me, it's not just about losing weight. Uh, you know, that, that's kind of one of the things that, that we're, you know, we're look, looking at it at an outcome measure. But to me, it's really more about being able to live a healthier life. And virtually 100% of the time, being healthier is learning how to make good food choices, learning how to engage in activities that are fun and enjoyable, because then you're more likely to continue doing them throughout your life. Thank you.